Hi, this is Dark Fox 127 and welcome to another Skyrim Cursor Kit tutorial video. In today's video, we are going to be continuing on with our MCM system. Now, if you've not seen the previous videos on my MCM system setup, then I strongly recommend that you go ahead and check those out first, as that pretty much explains all the basics, as well as what we've been doing to lead up to how the script is now. So what I'm planning on doing today is showing you how to add scroll options into your menu so you'll be able to have, say, a collection of banners and select which one you want and have it change within the game. So let's get started. Okay, so I've gone ahead and loaded up our test ESP with our test cell that we've been working on throughout this series. And you'll see that I've gone ahead and added three banners upon this post here. Now what we're going to have is a simple scroll option within our MCM system where we can select which banner we want to have visible. So in the kit obviously you can see all three of them sort of moulded together but only one's going to show at any given time. So if I double click on one of these, I've selected banner 3, you'll see I've given it a reference ID, very good idea because then we can state that in the script and the properties will autofill without having to select each one individually. So pretty basic script in there. And as you can see, Banner 3 is initially disabled, so if I just double tap one as well to get rid of that, hide that away. Banner 2 here, that's also initially disabled, and Banner 1 was hidden, so there's Banner 1. Banner 1, that is initially enabled, because that's going to be there by default, and then you can change it to the other ones. So that's nice and simple to set up. Then you want to go under Character and Quest, double click on the quest we've been working on, and go under the Scripts tab and edit the source of our MCM script. Now this is going to look a lot longer and a lot different to the last video because obviously I have added the functionality to change the banners and as usual I'm just going to go through and show you how this works so you can implement it into your own script. So at the top, dead simple, we've got the three references for each of our banners, one, two, three. Then if we go down I've got my option IDs here. I've added a little extra sort of selection here. This is for toggle option IDs. So I've made an integer for my banners. So this is IBAN. So you're going to need that added on. And I've got a new section for strings, obviously the list for the banners, which we'll see down here. That links with this. So you're going to have to state a new string. So I've got banners list. And then I have my index integer, which is another new section I've added. So the index, basically which options currently selected on the scroll option, the scroll menu, and that's index banners, I've called that, and equals zero. Zero is what it's going to be default set at. So zero is the first banner. And then if we carry on down, I have added a new event here. This is event on init, short for initialize. And you have to add this line into here, parent dot on init. And one thing to note is make sure that your events are in the right order because it can sort of screw the script up and it doesn't work. Or at least I've experienced that anyway. Then I have banners list equals new string and a value here. This value represents exactly the number of options that you're going to have. So in my case, I have three banners, three options, but you might have more. You might have 10 banners. It might not be banners. It can, of course, be whatever you want. This can be an option to change anything. But in my case, it's banners. So if you've got 10, change the three to 10. If you've got five, change it to five. Simple. Got a match up. So banners list equals new string. That's all basically just linking back up to our string there. Now if we carry on down, we have on page reset. This is where we add all of our options in the MCM. You'll see them visibly appear. And under cell design, I have added my banners. So I've got IBAN. So it's roughly the same as these, but it's just a little different. So where I've got add toggle option, this is a menu option instead. So I've got IBAN equals add menu option, and then I've got banner style, that's going to be the name of the option, and I've got banners list, and in these brackets here, index banners to select what it's currently set to. So you add that line in for your new list and change it accordingly to what you've called your various integers and such. So if we carry on down. Now the others work off option select, but this is not an option select, this is to do with menus. So if we carry on down. I have added a new event again. This is on option menu open. So when you open it, it's got to sort out the banners list where it's pulling the string from the indexes and search and what it's on by default. So by default, it's on zero. And that's nice, dead simple. So you basically put a little if statement for each one. So if you had another one of these, you copy this, change everything accordingly. So you have one for each. So I've got option equals IBAN. So if we're selecting the banners option, it's going to basically just set all that up. So the banners list, the index, and what it's default set to. 
So that's on there. Then we've got another little event here. This is for when you select an actual option, what it's going to do. So again, if you're selecting an option within the banners selection, then it's going if option equals IBAN, then index banners is index. So it's just matching up the, the, the numbers basically. Set menu option value IBAN banners list. This is very similar to what we've got up there. It's just set up for banners. So you just copy this stuff and adjust it to what you need for yours. And then it's going to go through and see what you've selected. So have we selected banner one, what it needs to do. So this is the function itself where it's going to start changing things. So we've got index banners is equal to zero. That's banner one equal to one banner two, two is three. It's a bit confusing, like I say, but you'll get used to it. It's easy enough to understand. And what I've got here, the first thing that'll do if you select banner one is it needs to disable all the banners and then enable the one it needs. So I've got disk banners. Now that's the name of a function. I find it a lot easier to separate that into a function rather than have to keep saying disable one, two, three, then enable this, disable one, two, three, enable this. It's easy to keep it shorter and point to a function that's used most often. So in this case, I've got disk spanners. I've put myself a function down here. Again, in this script, I have these dividers. You don't need to use these, but it really helps just to split everything up and you can get through and sort out what you need. So I, uh, the disk banners function just goes and disables all three banners, so there's nothing there. Then it enables the one that you need, depending on the option selected. So it disables one. And then I like to show a little message just to confirm to the user that it's been done. So banners changed. And then you've got banner two does the same disable banners but enables two and that one obviously enables three really dead simple and it's it's nice and easy really and you can of course do what you want here these can be options to do anything this doesn't have to be for banners like i say this can this can be doing all sorts so it's really up to you what you want this to to do but that's how all that is set up so it's really dead simple you just place those events in change everything to what you need and really, really easy. That's how you add in your scroll options. So what we're going to do is I've already gone ahead and compiled this, but I'll just hit control S and show you that that saves and compiles successfully. And what we're going to do is we are going to go under the properties and you'll see we've got our three new properties here. These are going to need filling in, of course. And if you've got any others, those will need sorting. Auto fill all because the references match up. Auto fills. Hit OK. OK again. Save that and we're going to load up the game and see this working. Okay, so here I am in game and as you can see we have the Imperial banner there by default. Just going to go into the menu, mod configuration, a test MCM. So we've got everything that was working before. Go into cell design and here is my new option. So I've got banner 1 selected by default and under banner style I can select which one I want. So 2 or 3. I'm going to go with the Nordic one just to be a little more neutral. Banner's changed, got a little message show. Come back out and it's changed the banner. Just to show the other ones. Let's just change that a few times. Like I say, you can customize this to what you want, have it name what you want, have the message show what you want, have the actual function do whatever you want. So you've got the Stormcloak one there. And banner one there. nice and simple and what I'll just do is I'll show off a little bit and show you the Grand Theater Reborn MCM and you can see the kind of things that we can do in the future so go into tower design you'll see what you can do and something I'm going to cover in a later video in the series is you can have things faded out until you are able to do them so let's say there's a restriction to this basically that until a certain condition is met you can't select anything which is a really nice way of limiting users. So let's say that you wanted to change the style of a door of a house, but you have to build the house first, and you don't want to be able to go into the MCM and change the style of a door to a house that doesn't exist yet. So you'd have conditions uh, locking this stuff off, which is really cool. So I've got all my toggle options here, and you can lay things out exactly how you want. You've got here, MCM style. This is also something that I might eventually expand upon, is having different ways of having images randomize on the MCM main page so like custom ones and such and as you can see if I go back in then go into settings select which one I want so you can do some really really cool stuff with this and if I come out you'll actually see like if I go on to Karanthi Tower Reborn's MCM it's changed to an image of the mage quarters that I asked for so yeah really cool stuff that you can do but we're going to keep it simple 
and we are going to go through step by step I'm not going to rush in and then just try and explain a whole finished MCM because that wouldn't get us anywhere so yeah you can customize this to do whatever you want so it doesn't have to be just banners but that's that that is it working very nice and simple Imperial Stormcloak Nordic what do you want select it sorted and that is it for another Creation Kit tutorial video, so I hope you found it useful. Please let me know in the comments section below. The next video, I'm not quite sure what it's going to be yet, but it's probably going to be something a little more simple with MCM because I think I like to kind of break the videos up a bit from the really complicated and long-winded stuff with the more quick and simple little additions that you can make. So it's probably going to be something to do with like tool tips or default options. You can of course go ahead and check out the rest of my work and tutorials on my website at www.darkfox127.co.uk and check me out on social media, Facebook's where I post most of my stuff if you want to follow the progress of my own mods and things like that. And also check out my Twitch if you want to see me stream uh, as and when I do. And in regards to Twitch you can also check out my Steam group where you'll get instant notifications as to when I'm streaming if that's something that you're interested in. And of course, hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll speak to you next time.